I want to pray better. I want to pray more vibrantly, more often, more joyfully, more willingly, and with more faith. I want to pray better. And I'll bet you do too. But if we are honest with ourselves, we pray sometimes, but we struggle. Right? Right? No? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Because <laughs> sometimes we are lazy. You get to bed, you don't really want to pray. You get up in the morning, you're late, and so you're rushing. Or sometimes we have existential struggles. God doesn't always answer our prayers. And if God knows everything, why should we even pray? We have these questions. Sometimes we don't understand prayer or God's response to our prayers. I mean, do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe what you pray? Perhaps some of us are like the little boy who one day gathered at the dinner table for Thanksgiving with the family, prayed really, really loud. He shouted the prayer, Dear Lord, bless our food, bless our family, bless our house, and oh Lord, Give me a bike. <laughs> and his mom leaned over to him and said, Son, you don't have to shout for God to hear you. He said, I know, but Grandma doesn't. <laughs> Do we believe in the power of prayer? What is it that we're teaching our children? What do you believe about prayer? No matter what we believe, prayer is one of the greatest Christian resources. One of our greatest weapons in this sometimes challenging and cruel world. It was an important part of Jesus' ministry. And no matter what was going on, he took the time to pray. He was intentional about prayer. <coughs> what about us? Do we take the time to pray? Are we regular at prayer no matter what is going on in our lives? Prayer is important because it establishes a connection with God. It is one of those channels that moves the flow and power of God in our lives. It opens our hearts and our lives to his wisdom, his direction, and his anointing. We would do well to remember, dear friends, that God is always just a prayer away. Jesus knew that, and he knew that God answers prayers, and that prayer brings comfort to the troubled soul. And so, in the prayers of the people, we will hear them shortly, we seek God's protection for people we know, and for people to whom we are connected through this fellowship of love and prayer. And what comfort, what consolation we find when we hear someone is praying for us. Andrew, how do you feel when you hear your dad say, I'm praying for you? I feel safe and good. You feel safe and good. Don't we all, when we hear you're prayed for, mm -hmm. I'm praying for you, how many of y'all pray for your priest? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. All the time. All, all the time. Trust me, I need it. You know? <laughs> I'm coming home from one house gathering and then my neighbors are outside and all this storm and they're like, Mario, you have to come over, come over. And so I'm up till midnight eating crabs. Oh, that's oh, rough, life. Yeah. rough life, pray for me. The struggle is real. <laughs> right, the struggle is real. And finally at 12.30, I said, thank God church is at 10. I said, yeah. I have to leave you all tonight. <laughs> no. But prayer brings us comfort. I believe when others pray for us, it is wrong for weary souls when love is shown. That is what Jesus does for us in the gospel today. He prays for us. And that's what we're going to do for little Nora in a short while, although she's paying no attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
In John 17, Jesus offers a stirring prayer. It is known as the high priestly prayer. He prays for himself, his disciples, and those who come to faith. As he is about to die, he lifts us up in prayer. Now, I don't know about you. He could have prayed for happiness, success, or his own safety, but rather he prays for others. If you are about to die, are you praying for others? Thank you, Jada. <laughs> but that's what Jesus did. And he prayed, to keep it brief, for three simple things. One, if we read the entire chapter 17, he prayed for our protection. Why pray for protection? Hey, Tyler. Why do you think Jesus prayed? For, oh, I'm just not hailing you. I'm asking you a question. <laughs> hey, buddy. Why pray for protection? Why did Jesus pray for our protection? So that nobody would kill us. Yeah. Why do we need protection in the world today? Anybody? Feel safe. To feel safe. Right? He prayed for our protection because, one, he wants to remind us that God is our protector. But two, he knows, their friends, that we are weak and vulnerable, and there is deception in this world. There is betrayal. There is hurt in this world, and he prays for our protection. Anybody ever been hurt in this world before? Betrayed, <laughs> deceived, you know? Yeah, one time I applied for a job, and they told me they'll start me at $10 an hour, and they start me at $9.95. I was deceived. <laughs> <laughs> There's betrayal and hurt in the world. We need protection also, not from the world, you know, but from ourselves. Oh my gosh. Anybody need protection from themselves? Because sometimes the mouth moves faster than the brain. And sometimes we say things and then we think about it and we realize, oh my gosh, what did I just say? Or, you know, I've shared this experience with you many times. Anybody drives on 95? <laughs> right? Yes. Sometimes my hand moves faster than my brain. But when I screw down the window and I put my hand out, no, I make the sign of the cross. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we need protection from ourselves because we are also in a spiritual warfare. And sometimes when you're having struggles, in your family, on the job, in the church, be aware that there is a greater spiritual struggle and we need to pray for protection. The devil prowls the earth like a roaring lion, the Bible says, seeking to devour whomever he may. We need protection. So pray for protection. Two, he prays for unity. What does unity mean, Kaylin? Togetherness. I had a professor that always said, together we stand, but divided we fall. Jesus knew how easy it is to become divided. And those of you who are parents know this well, because I did it as a child. When I couldn't get it from Dada, do you know what I did? I waited until he left the room, and then I would call Mama. <laughs> And if I could put the two of them against each other, then I have won. Believe you me, it's small scale, but it happens a lot today on a larger scale. Children come between parents. And that's why I often recommend that even when you're taking pictures, husband and wife stand on one side and put the children on the other. But more often than not, daddy's on one side, mommy's on one, and where are the children? right in the middle. And what happens when the children are out of the house? Daddy and mommy are still far apart and find it hard to connect with each other. Hmm. Deception and division can happen in very simple ways. But we need unity because things tear us apart. What's tearing you apart? What's tearing you apart so that you're not feeling that wholeness within? But also what's tearing life apart for you? What are some of the things? Arguments and divisions 
have been a part of the church from the first century till today. That's why we have the Bible, you know, always having to defend the unity of the church. Perhaps you know that little phrase, that it's hard to live with people, right? Believers do not always get along. And so one person wrote, to live above with those we love, oh, how that will be glory. To live below with those we know, now that's a different story. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get along. And so every day we have to pray that God will give us a spirit of love and openness to be one with the other. To accept the quirks and the differences in everybody. Because unity does not mean same. And different does not mean wrong. And so we have to constantly work at and pray for unity. There are too many conflicts, broken relationships, dysfunctional families in the world, and the church must be a symbol of unity, so we pray for it. He prays that we are one. We are sent out into the world to love one another, not to compete with one another, not to dispute with one another, not to quarrel with one another, not to be unkind to one another, not to gossip about one another, but to love one another and to be one. And so protection and unity, and then finally, he prays that we will be sanctified in truth. If we are going to be protected and we're going to be one, we need to be sanctified in truth. Question, don't show your hands. Do you tell lies? <laughs> Have you ever told a lie before? Not one in your life, right John? Never a day. <laughs> right. We all sometimes fib and then we sort of rationalize it. I know, I like to say I tell white lies right it's morally correct for me to say this to you at this time although it may not be true something in ethics everybody study ethics before they used to teach us how to do that right but we all tell lies but jesus simply wants us to be different he wants us to be truth tellers he wants us to be set apart sanctification means to be set apart consecrated too and he prays therefore for this sanctification so that we do not lose our way that we do not forget our values and our standards which should be different from the world i'll say this to you that i was always told when i was dropped off at the beginning of the week at school remember who you represent remember your values remember your standards and be an advocate for yourself. In other words, I was told, remember that you are set apart and be different. And then when mom became angry, it was like, I don't care how wrong the teacher was. Why did you put yourself in that position in the first place? It was another way of reminding me to be respectful and to be sanctified. And so, do others know that you are sanctified in truth? Do others know that you are Christian? Jesus prays for our protection, our unity, and our sanctification because the world needs what he has to offer. And as you go out there, remember that he's not left us to carry this task on our own to share this with the world. But he prays for God's grace and help. We have prayer, we have the Holy Spirit, which we will talk about next week at Pentecost. So let us join then in imitating Jesus and continue to pray. Pray for our protection and the protection of the church, for the unity of the church and for our sanctification. I believe you got to pray just to make it today. Amen. Amen. Amen.